Hey, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for another episode of Project, not Project, Elu Base. I keep saying Project Elu, don't really know why, but I do. But anyway, this is the Elu Base series, and I believe this is episode 4. And today I'm doing more stuff kind of around Kerbin. I've decided to build myself a space station because, um, well, the space station's good, and it's good to have somewhere you can dock in orbit. So, uh, before transfers, for refueling, for any kind of purposes, it's just generally a useful thing to have. So you see the core being launched right now, which is um, a crew canister, a little habitation module, and then some various docking ports. On this, well, this is on my favorite launch vehicle I have right now, which um, I believe I call it Triton 1. I don't know, it's just kind of quite a pretty efficient and can lift 20 tons to orbit quite well. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm using for that. Um, and this is just kind of obviously the core where everything else will be docked to. Um, I have I don't finish constructing it today because there is quite a lot and you know launching an entire orange fuel tank because this needs to be able to store fuel so that I can use it as a kind of go between when I'm taking just shuttles of crew out to Elu because I will eventually want just to be able to kind of get out there day to day sort of thing although the transfer takes a year so you know and this is all at two times time accelerate um, or thereabouts considering a um, the software I'm using is like, nah, I'm gonna do what I like and you can just kinda work with it. It's a little annoying. Anyway, I'm putting this in a 150 kilometer orbit, which is what I put almost all of my stations in, because uh, it's easy to get to, um, because it's not too high, and you can kind of catch up with it a bit. But I don't kind of... What most people do, and what you probably should do, is kind of, uh, when you have your station um, orbiting, and you want to get to it with a ship, you should kind of probably go into a slightly lower orbit, do a c like maybe an, a couple of orbits um, to catch up to it, because you launch behind it, and then you catch up to it and then burn out to where it is and then transfer to it. But what I do is I kind of wait till it's just behind me and then just uh, launch from the pad basically straight up to it, as you'll see in this episode um, a bit. Actually, I know I've done quite a lot of cutting, so you won't see that much of it. I just try to get it done as fast as possible. But, um, first episode I did of uh, Project Juno, that's on my channel, you could go find that. It's probably not that far back. Uh, the Orbital Assembly one, I do a lot of it, and it's just very quick. And pretty, um, inefficient, but awesome. Anyway, uh, now I need to fix my inclination, because I want to be dead on the equator, so it's really easy to get to. Because a lot of my bigger ships kind of wobble around and it's easier if it's just straight up on 90. So um, yeah, I'm using the moon as a reference frame. The moon is in a perfectly equatorial orbit in Kerbal Space Program, not in real life. It's slightly inclined, I think, in real life. Um, but uh, in Kerbal Space Program, for for reasons, it's in a perfectly equatorial orbit, which makes it nice and easy to get an equatorial orbit with your stations and ships. Yeah, so this has um, a shielded normal docking port on top for just being able to dock a ship there before I have a docking ring. Um, and then these four big uh, docking ports dock fuel stations, habitation, power supplies, and various things to it. And then one on the bottom, which I still haven't thought of a use for. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that's uh, in orbit. I'm just getting rid of all the crap on it. And I need to get rid of this little bit of debris which hasn't moved away. Um, so I swing my station at it because uh, that's how you do it. Uh, you would do it in real space. You'd um, you'd just ram it really hard with your spacecraft and hope that everything works out because uh, because safety is never a concern. Uh, this does have basic power generation. You saw on top of the thing there was lights um, which make it easier to dock, which I will be putting on all of my docking implementations on this uh, on this station. Anyway, you see right now the same launch vehicle taking my habitation to orbit. Um, it looks like it's running slow on my screen, hopefully not. But anyway, I've cut that out because you don't want to see the same launch again, which was effectively what it was. Or maybe you do, but um, it's boring and I don't want to have a really long episode. Anyway, so we are here 180 meters away from the station, burning in with this little RCS tug. Well, it's actually a pretty big RCS tug and I use it for almost everything, uh, for almost all of the things taking... That's not even really a sentence. I am tired and slightly ill. But no, I use it for pretty much all of my maneuvers, um, taking things to the station, like uh, fuel tanks and habitation and such like. Um, I don't take the fuel tank, because I'm taking a full orange tank uh, to the um, to, to the station for uh, 
docking at some point. I haven't taken it this episode, uh, mainly because of um, kind of time constraints and kind of it was actually quite a difficult task. Not because I can't get the master orbit, just because it kept breaking my ships and things. Um, so I want to put a little more work into that to make sure um, it works better. And I don't want to have to just kind of rush making my station because um, yeah, I want it to be good. So, you know. And this has got to be here for the foreseeable future, because it's kind of quite a lot of effort to make a station. I mean, I did most of this in a couple of days, but, um, you know. Anyway, I'm just deorbiting this type, well, kind of deorbiting it, putting it in a slightly lower orbit, so it doesn't hit my station. Although, technically at some point it would, but I'll, I'll uh, I'll use the magic of the, uh, uh, the game to get rid of it. Anyway, that has, uh, the habitation has, uh, a little bit of communication, which you just saw there. And anyway, the same launch vehicle is now launching the power rig? I think this is the solar panels and such. Um, and at some point there will be another fancy crossfade, because I, I, I felt I should put lots of cheesy fancy crossfades in. Um, oh yeah, oh, oh no, no, I forgot to put it in there. Uh, nice, 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 nice uh, post-production editing. You can tell I, I really know what's happening with this. Anyway, so this is the craft bringing it into... Uh, well, the station's still called Station Habitation Ship. I'll have to change that at some point, um, probably when I finish the station. And, yeah, this uh, will be able to fit 12... No, how many people will it be able to fit? Because there are four hitchhiker containers, so that's, what, 16? Four times, so, yeah, 16 plus two. So, yeah, it'll be able to fit 18 people at a time, and then quite a few ships um, at a time, which you'll be able to see soon, and it will be able to refuel them and such. It'll just be a good service station. Yeah, so, um, as I think I was saying, but kind of stopped for whatever reason, this will be here for the foreseeable future. I mean, I don't want to have to build another one really quickly. So, uh, I want to try and get it right. That's why I haven't rushed it, because I want to put some thought into it and, you know, just generally try to get this all right. Um, yeah, so, uh, this is even at four times time accelerate, maybe. Yeah, it is at four times time accelerate. Uh, still kind of slow, because this was weirdly off balance, I don't really know why um, but you can see it's just janking around everywhere um, it was kind of annoying to launch actually, it was really light payload but uh, you know yeah, I mean I did use uh, like a way too overpowered launch vehicle for these little fairly light things because it can lift 20 tons and I think these were like 10 tons or something but I just wanna, I couldn't be bothered to design a new one and I know that one works and I kinda just wanted to use one launch vehicle as much as possible because you know that's kind of more realistic because you don't just kind of build a brand new launch vehicle every time you want to launch something but uh in real life that is in Carl space program most people probably do um especially in career mode when you have to kind of just come up with something from whatever you've got anyway i'll warp into the daylight i do realize that has been ma mainly in the night time but i think it's lit fairly well um probably not on youtube but whatever um do you orbit this space tug? And oh, someone is playing Dota 2 apparently. Some person I have no idea who they are, and I don't know why they're on my friends list on Steam, but they are, so we're all gonna have to get over that. Um, yeah, so those are the main solar panels, and there is a couple of RTGs on there as emergency power, and lots of radial batteries. Uh, radial batteries. I use radial batteries because I just kind of wanted the lighting effect. Anyway, now I'm using a smaller launch vehicle because I thought I might as well. Um, because. Uh, well, the other one would have been too overpowered for this. This is just my docking ring. It's just got various docking ports so I can, you know, dock stuff to my station. And I think this is the last thing I dock to my station today. Um, because I think I probably want an escape system. Not because I'll ever use it. Because we all kind of, well, maybe not all of us. Um, but I, a lot of people just, uh, they, they build their stations and they put this really complex abort system to abort everyone safely to the ground in case... I mean, what happens, it's Kerbal Space Program, you don't get a huge amount of Kessler Syndrome, and it would be incredibly unlucky, but I probably will do a video on it, thinking about it, um, if you were in a station and you got taken out by a satellite, because the amount of time you actually spend in your station is, like, minuscule, and physics is off when you're not in your station, so it doesn't matter if a satellite accidentally would hit it, um, if it were there, so it would be incredibly unlucky, it would be awesome, and I will, uh, probably simulate it at some point because I really do do want to do a video on that because that would be kind of cool. I think that's a premise for the film Gravity. Well, not the premise, but it's an event in the film Gravity. Um, haven't seen it, just kind of saw a trailer, so I may be completely wrong. Uh, 
Yeah, but so you don't really need an abort system, but it's nice to have one. Uh, and even if um, the physics was on all the time, which would screw the game, and it did get taken out by a satellite, you're probably not going to be there, and your men are probably dead by the time you get there to remedy the situation. But, you know, um, it is a game, so it's so the point is to have fun, and maybe occasionally eject all of your curls from a station spontaneously. <coughs> ah, sorry, um, man flu or whatever. I'm I'm slowly dying. <laughs> that's that's a lie. I no, I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, you join me uh, around Elu now with this drive section um, from the last bit, and you're probably wondering why are you looking at the drive section? Because if you remember from the last episode, um, I left a keythane scanner on there, uh, right there. So I'm going to kind of search Elu for keythane because I don't want to have to ship huge amounts of fuel up to Elu because that would take ages and almost instantly I find keythane so uh so that's done no but I want to scan the whole planet and I am just scanning the equator first because that's where I'm going to be landing most but I do boost into effectively a polar orbit and do more scanning of the whole planet just in case one day I actually get good at the game and want to populate the whole e of Elu I mean that'd be cool lots of cities although uh I mean, a city in Kerbal Space Program made out of normal parts would murder your computer. Anyway, I'm skipping ahead because that took ages because you can't warp too fast or it doesn't scan it. And you can see I'm kind of uncovering this sort of large field of keythane um, around the equator, which is good because I, I'm going to want keythane there. Anyway, I've skipped ahead a little bit more. Um, so I found around the equator there are a couple of deposits. There is one very large field of keythane, which I will probably be mining and exploiting like us humans like to. Um, to get a kind of, you know, fuel um, around Elu so that I can do more things and don't have to have such heavy um, launch vehicles for coming back and out and just to make travelling through space easier. Anyway, now I'm changing my inclination and screwing up my orbits and having to waste a lot of fuel trying to not get it, uh, trying to not get my orbit too eccentric. Um, and this is all at one time time accelerate because, yeah, it's, you know, why not? Um, but yeah, if I'm in a polar orbit, um, I will scan all of the planet, whereas if I'm in the equ equatorial orbit, I will scan kind of the equa... equ... Ah, my words have gone now. That's just... it's over. No, um, if I'm just in an equatorial orbit, I'll only scan the equator, and albeit I'll scan it fast, but um, that's not really what I'm looking for. If I'm in a polar orbit, I can scan the entire planet, because I keep going around, and the planet is rotating beneath me, so I get kind of to um, look at every little bit of the planet and check for every little bit of keythane to exploit. Um, I wonder how long the series will run, because it would be really, really bad if I just completely ran out of keythane. I mean, it would be interesting, and uh, that'd be that'd be really bad. Get a kind of situation where I can't get home. I mean, if it runs that long, I would be incredibly surprised. Or if there's that little keythane, I would be incredibly surprised, as I've already found a huge field. But maybe I'll exploit the hell out of it and just make some random starships. Nah, it, it's too much effort to turn this into a starship series. I was going to do kind of a starship series at one point with like actual starship looking starships. I've done a few videos on them, but a series would just. I mean, I want maybe want to do something with them at some point, but it would just be so much effort. And I, I do put effort into things, but you know, that's a lot. Anyway. So this is now in uh, close to a polar orbit, but I'm pretty much out of fuel, and um, just kind of trying to get a few things right now. Trying to get fairly low to the planet, so I can. I don't know if it's best to be high or low. Um, I want to say low because then I'll be spending more time over each little sector, or maybe less. I don't know. I haven't put enough thought into this. Oh no, I'm, I'm fixing my inclination more, but I don't actually have a time bar on this screen player right now because um, because reasons. So yeah, um, I don't think I'm just gonna you know kind of wrap this up here. Um, so yeah, I will be using, I will be completing, and eventually using my station in the future um, for docking, obviously, and transfers between planets and such, and that'll make it all much easier. Um, and then eventually mining keythane on Elu to make that much easier, so I don't have to ship fuel out here, and that'll all be wonderful fun stuff. So today I've just basically made grounds for making transport through space slightly easier. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
Um, you know, uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you feel like seeing more of this, subscribe to keep updated and things if you feel like it. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.